This is a brief video introducing a four digit seven segment display. It's not meant to be a comprehensive tutorial, but I wanted to be able to test this thing out in Tinkercad and then on the real board. This is a companion video to the Tinkercad project. So on the top left, we can see the four digit seven segment display, and this is a 5641AS. In the bottom left, we see an excerpt from the data sheet showing that it's a common cathode type seven segment display, SSD. And then in the right hand side, you can see the actual pinouts for the package itself. This shows how we can address each of the seven segments on each of the specific digits, either one at a time or in combination. I wanted to start this project in Tinkercad, but unfortunately Tinkercad doesn't have the four digit seven segment display yet. So my aim was to create a similar package that I could wire up in a similar way to the real 5641AS. And on the right hand side, we can see how pinouts relate to the particular LEDs, which are the segments in each of the digits. So in order to create this in Tinkercad, I first started with the template of the pinouts for the true package. And then I tried to replicate that. I've got different colored wires for each of those pins. And then we can see the schematic expanding. Tinkercad has the seven segment display package, but just not the four digit version of it. And so I've wired this up in such a way that I can turn on and off each of those individual seven segment displays with the same wiring that is on the actual package. And each of the segments themselves from A through G and the decimal point is wired up in parallel to each of those four individual seven segment displays. So since that four digit seven segment display from the data sheets was only overlaid, just to give you an idea, and also to help me with the wiring on the board, I've removed that picture now. Then I've written some code in order to test out this wiring. And the first part of the code is to declare this array of numbers. And this is based upon the truth table for the particular numbers that we want to show up. The first part of that figure is what the individual seven segment display needs to look like for a particular number. And then the second part of the figure is which segments are on for each particular decimal number. And then the bottom is the truth table showing that for a particular number, that particular segment is on or off. So if there's a cross, then we want it to be on. And if there's no cross, then we want it to be off. For eight, we can see we want them all to be on. And for one, we can see we only want to have B and C on. And so this array in the code replicates this truth table with ones because we've got the common cathode type with ones showing when we want the segment to be on and zeros showing where we want the segment to be off. This next part of the code is specifying the pinouts for each of the segments. So this is how it's wired to the Arduino itself. And we're using pins two through to nine for segments A through to G and the decimal point. So that's eight pins we need for that. And the next part is showing for the particular digits so we can turn on and off particular digits. In this case, for this particular package and for the selection that's been made in Tinkercad, we need to set the segment to be high and we need to have the digit value to be low so that the particular segment will turn on. The first part of the setup is that we declare each of the segments from A through the decimal point to be outputs and we declare each of the pins that control the digits to be outputs as well. Then we have some functions that we've created in order to turn all the segments on and turn all the segments off. And we're passing in there a value in milliseconds, how long we delay between each of the segments being turned on or turned off. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. In the next part of the code, we step through each of the digits individually and each of the numbers individually. And so we count from zero through to nine on digits one through to four, or in this case, we've addressed them with a zero base, so it's zero through to three. And we've just got some example code here where we've got a loop that counts from zero through to 9,999. And the little bit of code there is showing a way to work out what the digit value is for the thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. And then going through to write that particular number to that particular digit. And we've also got a delay in between each one of those writes happening. So the chance for the LEDs to be energized. This next little bit of code is a way so we don't have to have a busy wait while we're waiting for the counter to go up. And we can continually go through the loop and continually energize that particular number until the time comes 
to move on to the next step. So in the case where we haven't actually reached the number, we just increment our counter. And once we've reached the maximum counter, then we set that back to zero. This little block of code here is done perhaps more verbosely than could have been done, but I did it like this so that it was clear that we can turn off the segments by setting them to be low. And then we can also turn off the digits, addressing that particular digit by setting the value to be high. That prevents a parent from flowing through. And then in the turning on of all cases, we do the opposite of that. We set the digits themselves to be low, and then we set the segments to be high. So that turns on each of the digits and then turns on each of the segments. And then finally, we've got a useful function here which allows us to write a particular segment array. So it doesn't have to be a particular number, but it's a segment array of eight ones or zeros, as in highs or lows. And that's what is written to each of those segments. And then also the digit address. So in this case, we've got from zero to three to address the four digits. And the first step is we turn them all off without pausing in between turning them off. So they all simply get turned off. And then we write to a particular digit to make it low so that we're specifying only a single digit that we're writing to. So we can have different numbers on each of the digits. And then we go through the seven segments in the decimal point. So eight increments in the for loop, and we turn that segment either on or off. Okay, now we can see a simulation of this happening. We can see that the first step is it actually turns on each of the segments in turn, and then it turns off each of the segments in turn, and then we can see it's counting up from zero through to nine on each of the digits. This is still in the setup, and now we're in the loop itself, and you can see we're counting up since you all know how to count between zero and 10,000 just speed this up and then just to prove that once it actually gets to the 999 it does go back to the zero so then that happens there okay so let's see this same code running on the board you can see the same thing happen segments turn on and off in turn we count from zero to nine on each of the digits individually and then we start to count up so once again let's speed that up okay and it's interesting to look at this so this is showing slow motion version you can see that each of the digits is actually being turned on in turn but to our eyes it appears as though they're actually on continuously so we we perceive it as being on without any flicker so back to speeding it up get close to our max count slow it down again and then we can see that it actually reaches and goes back to zero and starts counting again so that's great enjoy the project